<laughs> so um, I like that you have a skeptical approach. You also have that electrical engineering background. And um, so I think as actually something you mentioned, that's a good entryway into what I'm really trying to understand. Like I'm, I'm really trying to understand um, how reality is actually constructed Mm-hmm. to the like shamanistic viewpoint i know that's huge but like there's actually a little something to, to pick up on i think because you mentioned the the condors and the animal signs right yeah and so okay i've long read that that is an aspect of shamanistic belief systems that animals can act as like messengers or whatever but i've tried to visualize like how does that actually work like like say john is driving down the road is there a condor <laughs> flying over the desert and it's like whoa john's flying over the road it's time to go over there like is the is the condor doing it by its own sentience or is it all interwoven into some just tapestry that is so profoundly complicated that we can't see where the threads begin and end yeah more the latter in more my the latter. i mean in my experience And it's actually, it seems like a big question and and it it could be super complicated if your brain wants to, you know, the brain likes to indulge, let's face it, we love thinking about things. Um, But I thought about this question before the call, you know, and I'm like, yeah, how would I, how would I explain that? I've probably explained it a bunch over the years, but, but, you know, I always go back to, hey, just, just look around, like, look at nature, like, what does it look like happening? What is, (laughs) what are you Generally, if you know what happens for you, it's pretty straightforward, and it's kind of like, you know, if there is uh, a con, and and part of it is the unknowable, right? Like if you go, okay, well, there was one consciousness, the one sitting there in the void. Okay, well, what was before that, and what is that? Where to come from? Sorry, we, we'll, I don't think we'll ever be able to answer that. Right. But let's start with that, and let's just say all that we experience now, all the multiverses, if there's a thing, all the planets, all the beings, aliens and otherwise, and humans and races of human, you know, condors and rocks and single-celled organisms, take the whole thing, right? About hundreds of thousands of species just here on this planet, let alone, you know, a bazillion other planets and probably a lot of other things happening. But nonetheless, if it's just this sort of one consciousness that to shamans, seeks greater and greater complexity. Go, oh, there's kind of an impetus there. Like, there's this one thing. And then, hey, wouldn't it be interesting? And this is like us. We go to movies. We don't like to just sit around and do one thing all day. We're not stone people anymore. We don't sit for billions of years <laughs> not moving. In other words, <laughs> there's sort of this conscious effort to make it more and more interesting and of course, humans have taken that to a whole new level with technologies and just look at the, the room you're in. I mean, we do like all kinds of interesting creative things and make stuff and, you know, genetic engineer. I mean, you name it, we're taking it as far as we can, certainly. And, and maybe we're not the, you know, maybe there's beings more, more than that than us. So if you look at it that way, it's like, okay, so everything is essentially interwoven. If, if nature has sought greater and greater complexity from rocks flying around space and the very beginning and to you know planets and all this kind of stuff and continuing um we've been all of that like if you and me as these souls that have some sort of sense of uh, identity we're not exactly the same person etc physical or non-physically um you know We've gone through phases of, well, we were stones probably when there was nothing but stone and then we were single celled organisms and we were eagles and condors and now we're like this human thing. And I've speculated in the past if someone makes a robot that is has a brain more capable than this and a body more capable than this that can run faster, do more things. And, this, and I died physically, this body went, would I jump into that one? Yeah, of course I would. Well, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to be in a faster, more interesting vehicle? And so then it would be a conscious machine, robot. This is a conscious biochemical machine, neurologically, and it's just so complex. I don't think we'll we'll come up with a robot maybe complex enough to match it per se anytime soon. But you get what I'm where I'm going. It's right. like so so. Yes, we have a connection to everything we've been before. The stones that I use in my mesa and the Kara tradition to help help give me information, help clear energies from people, they're somehow communicating with me on a level that, no, I don't have to sit in it and go, hey, 
it's more like, huh, you know, like it's more unconscious, right? So if a condor is flying by, my brain could speculate, oh yeah, I read animals speak. I know what that means. I know what it's, you know, the message it's giving me. There's some, there's some of that, but I think it's the deeper energetic soul level that it's saying, it's basically giving me its vision. It's, it's, a, it's, it's enhanced. I already have it, but it's enhancing it. Mm. It's saying you need to be able to see really clearly when you get down there, because you're going to hear something that if you miss it, you're, you're not going to get to where you wanted to get, you know, mm. Oh no, I'm not a shaman. Forget about that. That was stupid. You know, like then 20 years later, the same thing happens. And I've been an engineer for 20 years. So it's really just like, all of nature, as we say, conspires to, to enhance what we are asking for consciously or unconsciously. And so I think there's some part of us that has to want it, has to be asking, because the way we're trained as shamans is to not shove anything down anybody's throat, you know, to not walk up to somebody and say, hey, you need a shaman session. I can really help you. You're obviously suffering. No, we ignore it until someone goes, hey, can you help me? You go, oh, yeah, maybe I can. You know, let's let's try this. Hmm. So I think all of that, I don't, <clears throat> when people ask, you know, well, what about this? What about that theory and conspiracy theories and all this kind of stuff? It's like, well, what would you do? I mean, that's a simple, all you have to do is look within and go, would I do that? <laughs> you know, and if you would, then yeah, somebody's probably doing it. <laughs> it's not that complicated. Right. You so know? the way, the way you're describing it kind of sounds to me like um, people, people with other belief systems call it synchronicity. Do you mm. think that's a, an accurate uh, the way, yeah. you know, like you're saying that the universe sends these animal signs and everything, just these things that seem to kind of like, emerge from the reality around you to give you signs that you're headed on the right way. It sounds to me like what, you know, paranormal researchers and stuff call synchronicity. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is what's cool. You could take any, any belief system out there, any religion or a religion or, or science, quantum physics, the stuff like Nassim Harriman's working on now that it's like the unified field theory, like beyond quantum and you, it all fits. It's all true. It's all like, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that was my whole thing. I mean, I studied all this stuff because if it was true, it had to match. Like, this couldn't be true and be totally counter to this and this also be true. Like, it just, right? But it's like, if there's a way that they fit, then it's like, oh, yeah, that seems even more true. Like, I could use that. I could use this piece and that piece and that religion and the way they do that and that technique and that science, like, yes. So absolutely, every, it's almost like in a lot of ways, every, everything is right in that it could be a piece of or some layer of this bigger picture. Hmm. You know, uh, you could argue, you know, conscious, that one consciousness is like the creator, the, that over a long period of time, what we are living in now was created through that consciousness and all of its pieces, all of, all, all of its forms. And the evolution also happens, in other words, as a part of that. So it's kind of like, yeah, you know, things, make, things that make sense, make sense and probably are true in a way and can be. But, but my Caro teachers are great in that because they're so simple, it really breaks it all down. Like I said, they just look around. What does nature tell you? You know, what is the primal aspect of? And it's like they go, you know, you could you could have libraries of science and religions and spiritual traditions and philosophies and belief systems, and and it's like I said, the mind is like, ah, oh, this is this is cool stuff. But then they go, but so what? How do you grow corn with it? 